Video games are good. As a planet, we spend three billion hours a week playing video games. It is expected that 500 million users will multiply to 1.5 billion by 2020. These numbers tell us about the importance of video games as social practice. But does this behavior produce any positive effects? Video games function as an interactive form of entertainment that provides the user with an escape from reality, but are often considered to be damaging. It's important to note that anything in excess is bad, so if you just play video games and do nothing more, chances are you won't see any benefits. That said, many studies have shown increases in cognitive function after playing video games. One study had participants play adventure games for 30 minutes a day for two months, resulting in an increase of grey matter in brain areas linked with memory, strategic planning and hand-eye coordination. These are encouraging results for particular mental disorders which cause these brain regions to shrink, indicating the potential use of video games as a form of therapy. It's often assumed that too much screen time adversely affects eyesight. People who don't play action games have normal, or what is called corrective to normal vision. But studies on gamers who play action games more than five hours each week have found improvements in eyesight. Not only can they see smaller details more clearly, like tiny writing, but they are better at differentiating variations in grey tones, which is one of the first things to diminish with age. Surprisingly, action games like shooters can also increase an individual's attention to detail. Take a look at the words on the screen and say what colour the word is as fast as you can. So, blue, yellow, green, red. Try it alone. As we continue, it becomes harder because there's a conflict in your brain between the word itself and its color. If you play more than five to ten hours of action games a week, you are probably able to solve these problems much more quickly than others. This is because your brain is actually more efficient in the regions associated with attention. This extends to a person's ability to track moving objects. So, let's play a little game. Try to keep track of the blue ghost. Eventually, it will turn yellow like all the others. Was this ghost originally blue? If you said yes, you have a functioning brain. Let's try it one more time, but with three targets. Staring at the middle of the screen without moving your eyes can help to keep track of the guests. Was this ghost originally blue? If you said no, you'd be right. One more time, but with five blue ghosts. Was this ghost originally blue? Yes, it was. So, average young adults can have a span of about three to four objects of attention. Action video game players have a span of about six to seven objects of attention. Video games can also be incredibly educational. There are many games that are used as teaching tools for both young and old. In elderly people, specially designed brain-teasing video games have shown improvement on focus while slowing the brain's aging process by up to seven years. Further, video games can generate two phenomena known as urgent optimism and social fabric. Urgent optimism is the desire to act immediately to tackle an obstacle, combined with the belief that there is always a reasonable hope of success and reward. Those rewards trigger dopamine in your brain, making you happier. Social fabric is the building of bonds and trust through the cooperation that is required when playing a game with another person. Those interactions with others can create feelings of empathy and likeness, even if you were beaten by the other player. So, are video games actually good?